it was here and now and he was inviting people to be part of the kingdom of peace. And I take it, Muhammad was, uh, and the Quran are doing the same thing. It's calling people to live together in peace and harmony. Glory to God in the highest, done on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. That's the announcement of Jesus' birth. By the tender mercy of our God to guide our feet into the way of peace. Um, I think the most challenging thing to read um, in the Gospels is Jesus repeated demand that people who are in the kingdom love their enemies. Not just people who are in the kingdom, but people who are outside. And believe me, they knew who enemies were. Uh, almost all the disciples, I think but one, were killed by Romans. They knew who enemies were. They were people that killed them. And Jesus says, love your enemies. Uh, and so he sends the disciples out. He gathers disciples together, realizes it's a big task to spread the good news of the kingdom to the whole world, and he's going to need help. And he sends the disciples out with the good news. And the good news in the Gospel of Luke isn't that if you just believe in Jesus, you get to go to heaven in the afterlife. The good news is peace on earth, goodwill towards men. That's the good news. He sends them out with the good news, and it's the message of peace. Um, and then Jesus, at the end of his life, returns to Jerusalem, where he spent a lot of time trying to persuade people to enter into God's kingdom of peace and compassion and love. And before he enters in, he wept over Jerusalem because they did not know the things that make for peace. And then Acts, the, the author of Luke also wrote Acts. Acts is the second part, the way Christians live their lives early on. And the people that were taking the, the message of peace and compassion and harmony to the world, at the end of Acts, we read, these people that have been turning the world upside down have come here. Peace has come here to us. Um, and I think Christians really grossly misrepresent the good news and the message of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom is radically inclusive. It's for Canaanite women, dogs, men, Arabs, Jews, uh, Christians. Um, the list could go on and on. God loves all of them and the kingdom is open to them. And you're to bring them in and show them love and peace and compassion, even your enemies. Dr. Lord, I have a lot of things that I have to do with the people who are in the world, and I have to do with the people who are in the world, and I have to do الآية التي تقول المجد لله في الأعالي وعلى الأرض السلام وبالناس المصر ومنها كذلك برضو في إنجيل لوقا قوله بأحشاء رحمة إلهنا لكي يهدي أقدامنا في طريق السلام و... وأكثر شيء يعني يحدث تحدي في نفوس من يقرؤون الإنجيل هو قوله في غير من موضع أحبوا أعدائكم من يتكلم عن الأعداء حتى الذين قتلوه يعني تبقى من رواية الإنجيل يقول أحبوهم يعني وفي أعمال الرسل كذلك يتكلم عن إن هؤلاء الذين فتنوا مسكونا قد أتوا إلى هنا فلا بد من بناء رسالة سلام مشتركة ورسالة تسامح والمودة والرحمة بين الجميع ولا تصدر هذه الصورة التي فيها تشبيه الناس بالكلام والحط من النساء والحط من البشر. So I, I think we should all be working together, Muslim, Christian, and Jew. To do the things that make for peace, uh, and we need to do it together. And um, we need to do that because we're we're mutually bound by this belief that every human being is disturbed, deserving of respect, because every human being is created by God, uh, and every human being is deserving of love because God loves every human being. And um, we're to act in, like God here on earth. So I think we need to make, we, our, our genuine faith needs to inspire um, kindness, compassion, and liberty, not intolerance, hatred, and violence. But by the way, I understand why it inspires intolerance, hatred, and violence in uh, many, especially young Muslim men in countries like Iraq, in countries like uh, Syria or um, uh, Yemen, um, Libya. 
the United States is a destroyer. You know, I hopefully no one's taping this. I, I think the United States is the number one exporter of terror in the world, and um, and we expect people to just bow down when we fly drones and kill people. Um, I'm a serious, severe critic of United States military intervention all over the Middle East. We have destabilized the Middle East. We killed children. I, I published a blog last week entitled, We're Killing Children and We Don't Care. And it's about Yemen. If any of you is from Yemen and want to get that, uh, I'll send a copy to you. You can read it. I, I write blogs against Islamophobia. I mostly, that's what I mostly write about uh, in the Huffington Post uh, and other places. Uh, I'm a critic of our government's interventionist policy. I think we, we don't really care about killing um, the people in Yemen and Saudi Arabia, uh, sorry, Yemen and, and Iraq and Syria. We don't care about children there because we don't think they're really fully people. We've dehumanized them. So it doesn't matter if we drop bombs on them. And if we call ourselves a Christian nation, which I think we're not, by the way, but I think Christians, above all, should be fighting to have a government that manifests kindness and compassion and liberty, not the sort of intolerance, hatred, and violence that we have. الشرق الأوسط وزعزعة استقراره حتى أنه كتب في مدونة يعني من فترة قريبة We kill children and don't care نقتل الأطفال ولا نبال ونتوقع أن الناس يعني تخضع لنا وتعترف بالهيمنة وتعترف بالسيطرة ومن أكثر المنتقدين للسياسة الخارجية الأمريكية العسكرية وهو يعني يأسى لكل ما يحدث في العراق وفي ليبيا وفي أفغانستان وفي غيرها من دول المسلمين وغير المسلمين لأنه في في نهاية إنسان ونحن مشاعر الإنسانية للناس هنا. I'll just say one more thing and then I'll quit. I I think I, I'm not against tribes. We're tribal people, um, and and our religions are part of our tribal nature. We we need to come together as people who are like us to to be motivated and to learn. Um, so I, I'm not telling you that you should all be Christians or that we should all be Muslims or the Christians and Muslims are all the same or the Christians, Muslims, and Jews are all the same. We're, we're really different. We have lots of differences. Yeah, that's okay. But Christianity properly understood is about peace and compassion. Me showing you peace and compassion even when you disagree. And Islam properly understood is about peace and compassion. Um, and so we need to come together in our religions to understand them properly understood and to mo have them motivate us to peace and compassion. But then we need to get out of our tribes and spread peace and compassion around the world. Thank you. <laughs> تناقضات في بعض الأحيان لكن لابد على هذه المعادلة المختلفة أن تعيش سويا في سلام وأن تقدر يعني الأمور المشتركة بينهم إلى الطاولة وأن يزيدوا من استثمار هذه الأمور المشتركة ومن تفعيلها حتى يكون السلام على الناس وحتى يعني يعيش الناس في في أمان وفي رحمة وفي مودة. Finally, I would like to thank Professor Kelly Clark again for accepting the invitation and coming into the most he will be reported to be the first non-Muslim speaker ever in this Muslim community. I would like greatly to thank him for coming once more again. And hopefully next time we're going to be meeting al Azhar University officially in Cairo, hopefully inshallah by this summer. Yes, uh, yes uh, inshallah we're going to have a uh, talk uh, after uh, five minutes. Uh, Professor Clark is going what are the arrangements here or, or upstairs? So, so if that's the floor, inshallah, uh, we are, I am Professor Clark and some of those who are want to join informal discussions with, with him and me on the fifth floor, we are going to have the meal after five minutes and spend about half hour uh, for you.
your questions and discussions because we don't have time before start. Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, hosting me and Professor Clark at this uh, event. Thanks, Chief Abdullah. Thanks, the board and all the administration and all the community here at the most. Jazakum Allah. Thank you.